Rare relics from an important period in early Georgia history rose from the Savannah River in January 2022, as archaeologists completed recovery of 15 cannon believed to be from more than one Revolutionary War shipwreck. The mystery first unfolded in late February 2021, when a dredge unexpectedly sucked up three iron guns and fragments of anchors at a deep spot in front of Old Fort Jackson known as Five Fathom Hole. It was a surprise. This was completely unexpected. Uh, they thought that dredging had occurred in this area several times, and it was clear that it had, uh, but none of these materials had ever been brought up before. But there'd been so much dredging in the river uh, that mm, I don't think anybody really expected this. They've survived all the dredging. That was probably the biggest surprise. Early suspicions focused on the HMS Rose, a famous British warship intentionally sunk here in 1779. But research quickly discounted that possibility, since historical documents show the Rose was sunk further upriver, and more importantly, that all of her weapons were removed prior to sinking. British archives indicate that the weapons on the river bottom were actually the remains of two or more commercial vessels used to transport British troops, ships that were also sunk to block the river when a large enemy fleet suddenly appeared off Tybee Island. The French had blockaded the port of Savannah, uh, getting ready to, to attack. So they scuttled these troop transports to keep the French out and, you know, basically saved the city early on from being taken over. They plugged the channel to where the ships could not come, in, come up, the French could not come up and take the city. Dredging in the area was halted, and sonar surveys revealed the presence of more than a dozen more cannons scattered on the river bottom at Five Fathom Hole. The Savannah District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers brought in a team of experts highly regarded for their earlier work raising the wreckage of the Civil War ironclad CSS Georgia nearby. They were already familiar with this territory, so they were the perfect fit for this project. Step one for the archaeologists from Commonwealth Heritage Group was to create a detailed map of the artifacts, combining sonar with hands-on measurements by trained archaeological divers. Hey, Jim, can you get us the measurement from the muzzle to that possible trunnion? Then it was time for salvage divers from Savannah-based Commercial Dive and Marine Services to get to work bringing these historical artifacts to the surface. Dives in the middle of the busy shipping channel could only take place at high or low tide, and only if no freighters were passing overhead. And even then, the work was next to impossible. Putting the divers on the cannon was difficult. We had to use high-tech positioning equipment to, to get them back on things and make sure we're in the right location. But we had to uh, kind of run in and out when the tides and, and the vessel traffic ceased. Kind of when all the stars aligned. The tide turns and it turns like that. You got zero viz. The current's ripping you. You're, you're holding on for dear life half the time trying to, to hike your way through down there. It's been a race against the clock. Every time you get in the water, you're racing the clock. One by one, the divers managed to get sturdy slings beneath the heavy cannon. There it is. Then the team used inflatable lift bags to wrench the guns from the thick mud on the bottom. We add pressure to it, and uh, sometimes it takes a while for that cannon to work its way out of the mud. But once it surfaces, uh, we know we got it. We pull it in tie it off to the boat and move it. The cannon were gently placed back on the river bottom at a safe, shallow spot near Hutchinson Island while the recovery work continued. Then, on January 18, 2022, a big crane hoisted them out of the water and into metal troughs which were trucked the short distance over to the Corps of Engineers depot. Getting everything out of the water and taking away especially a lot of the uncertainties with dealing with vessel traffic, weather, and everything else that goes along with the environment out there. A big relief, big uh, breath of uh, fresh air. The next day, archaeologists and other experts spent hours taking a closer look at the artifacts. It's a little hard to make out, but I think I got it here. It uh, starts at 8 inches from center of trending okay. and ends at 9. Basically, you look at the measurements and we always refer to a cannon by its total length. Total length is from after the cascable to the front of the muzzle face. And all these measurements can get put into a database and you compare them to known cannon 
from known Canon manufacturers. So you get more and more knowledge. And the more knowledge, knowledgeable you are, the more informed you are. Concealed beneath centuries of concretion were real surprises, even for these veteran archaeologists. I had assumed every one of those cannons were nearly identical. Um, and now that we're measuring, we're starting to see some real differences. The river also yielded up other smaller but equally important artifacts, including several pieces of bar shot, a type of ammunition that looks a lot like a modern dumbbell. It's basically two half cannonballs with a bar in between it and they're, you know, 12, 12 inches to 16 inches in, in length. And this thing spins through the air. If you're firing at the rigging, it breaks all the rigging or it hits the, the mast of the ship. You've got a greater chance of hitting the mast of the ship with a, with a bar. Also recovered fragments of ship's hardware. The main artifacts you find there are anchors. Uh, we have so many pieces of anchors of all different sizes and shapes. It's, it's pretty amazing. The story is still unfolding. Once the research is complete, there's more work to be done. We are going to identify a few that would be great candidates for conservation, and we are going to try to conserve those. We hope that they will be put on exhibit locally in Savannah so that people can see them, and we're just interested to learn more about the story. So hopefully it'll shine a light on the Revolutionary War period in Savannah and how it was saved from the French. Reporting from Savannah, I'm Michael Jordan for the Savannah District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers.